Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about my trip to Dublin in Ireland. So let's get started. So last week I went to Dublin. I spent there time from Saturday morning until Monday afternoon and I came by plane from Edinburgh. If you haven't watched my video about Edinburgh, you can check it out as well after this video. But yeah, let's talk about Dublin. So you arrive to the airport. I arrived early morning. I think I was there at about like 9 a.m. or something like this. So you arrive to the airport and there's a few different buses that you can take to the um, to the city center. The option I took was Dublin Express. It's a bus that basically goes from the airport, stops maybe, sometimes depends if there are passengers that they have to pick up on the terminal too, but normally it goes directly to the city center. And then you have different stops in the city center. The ticket costs either eight euro to go and return if you buy it online or if you buy it on the airport is 10 euros. So two euro different, I would say it's okay. The return ticket is kind of like open ticket so you can use it whenever time you want to, but it's much more profitable to buy the return ticket instead of buying to go and to go back. So this is going going from the airport. Then in the city center, I stayed in a hostel that was called Abigail. And it's a hostel that is literally in the center of Dublin, right next to the river, in between two bridges that are quite popular. One is O'Connor and another one is with H. I never remember the name. However, the Bridge of H, I will write you down here. What is the name of the bridge? Supposedly one of the most important bridges you have to check out in Dublin. About this, we're gonna talk a little bit later. But yeah, my hostel was uh, quite cheap in a city center. There was good Wi-Fi. It was okay in a way of cleanness. I had a room of eight female bed bunk with a private bathroom. So it was one bathroom for eight people. I was lucky enough to have for the first night on Saturday, I was spending my night with all the girls from US and only one of them didn't go out with us, but about it later. And the second night, it was a little bit mixed up, but we didn't go out anyways. The hostel was okay. I would say the price indicated quality. The price, what um, you can get the room, as I said, about like eight people room. It's about between 25 and 35 euro. I happen to be right after St. Patrick's, so the prices were a little higher. However, normally I was checking it out, it's about 25 and 35 per night, even with like not long advantage of booking it. I booked it through booking, so yeah and you can pay it actually when you arrive. It's also a good idea for it. And yeah, as I said, it was quite okay. Nothing special. For this prize, I was not expecting anything more, anything less. One thing that I didn't like is that one of the girls who was staying with us on Saturday night and decided to stay one more night from Sunday to Monday, she stayed in the same hostel in another room. It was also a bed bank female dormitory and she got bigger room and it was much better and it was not full. So our room was full for both nights and her room, I think she stayed for like, with like two other people. So in comparison that we were in eight and she was in three, in the same room, which was actually bigger, was a little bit weird. So I don't know how they put people in, no clue, but I would say for this price still, I would say I cannot complain for Dublin city, city center. I would say it was quite nice area as well. I didn't feel bad in a way of like, you know, that it was dangerous or something else, but I was also most of the time in the evening at night with another people. So hard to decide. And yeah, let's talk about Dublin itself. So I have a weird, experience of Dublin. I don't know what to think about it. So I walked around, I look in the city, I had a situation that I went into a smaller street and it was smelling like piss everywhere. It was disgusting. Like, you know, sometimes it happens that you enter some street and it smells at the beginning or in the end, the whole street would smell like this. However, I could blame it on St. Patrick. As I told you, I was in a weekend right after, like still weekend of St. Patrick. St. Patrick was the first day and I came on Saturday. So let's maybe skip this part. But yeah, the city itself, I wouldn't say that there is like a lot to see. I didn't fall in love with the city by the day. I would say it's very, very normal city. I mean, nothing special, not too big, not too small. There are a lot of parks. This is a big part that helped me on the first day because I, as I told you, I arrived in the morning. I couldn't come into the hostel until two. Probably if I would come earlier, they would allow me to come in, but you know, I didn't want to come there and then like be said, okay, don't go away. So I was with a small bag. So obviously I didn't walk around so so much I did a little walk and then I went to the park and then I grabbed some lunch and I ate in a park I was lucky to have like super sunny weather so I ate on the grass when other people were sitting as well that was I believe St. Stephen's Green Park but yeah it was a very very nice park and there are a few other parks that are quite nice as well what I recommend is the park next to college so University of uh, Dublin and as well the park where the Oscar Wilde um, posture monument whatever thing with him is and it's called let me just check uh it's called 
Merlin Square Park, and it's very close to the to the college. In the college, in the University of Dublin, there's also a huge library that is very very nice looking. So if you have a chance to see it, go ahead. It's very cool. And yeah, and then you can do as I did. I ate my lunch again in a park because I personally don't like to eat alone in a restaurant. And because it was sunny, I was like, okay, let me take a lunch in a park. Going back to like visiting again. So what you can visit actually in the city instead of like wandering around and parks and this university thing, I would say there are like two churches that are recommended to visit. One is a church, another one is a cathedral. I went to both of them. They are nice looking from the outside, nothing special, I would say. But to see the inside, you have to pay 8 or 10 euro, which in my opinion is super high. Even if you would get the audio guide or whatever, I don't know, I didn't enter. I don't think this price is good in a way. I don't think it's worth paying that much for the church. You may think a different thing, but I would say I would be willing to pay 2 euro like I did in Palermo, for example. But I'm not willing to pay 8 or 10 euro just to hear the story about the church, you know. And at the end, I've seen so many churches in my life. My mom is crazy about visiting churches and I've seen it since whenever we start to travel. So I would say two less churches in my life will not change anything. Another thing that is very popular in Dublin, I would say, first of all, go to the port. It's quite nice or like at least have a view from like farther away to the port. It's very, very nice. Take a walk inside the city where all the bars are, restaurants and, you know, a little bit of the life part. As I mentioned earlier, the parks and the bridges. There's so many bridges. However, most of them are very neutral, I would say. Nothing special. The one close to the port is uh, kind of special, but the rest of the bridges are quite normal. The one that was, as I told you, there was O'Connor and another one that starts with H something. This is supposedly the most popular bridge and must to pass the bridge, like to cross it. I didn't feel that it changed my life that I crossed this bridge. It's the one of the bridges that is all only for pedestrians. Who knows, maybe I didn't have the feeling that I was supposed to have. Now let's go to the part of the museums because you might be interested. There's Museum of Ireland that is for free. I didn't go there because I had super nice weather and I personally prefer to go to the park, chill and like, you know, have a nice time, have a nice walk instead of going to museum. And also I went like two days earlier to Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh. So I was like, okay, I'm done with museums for that time. But yeah, it's an option. You can check it out. I've seen that it's quite popular. So it's a thing to see as well. And there are two other museums, like museums. One is a museum of Guinness and another one you can do many different trips to, with whiskey. I'm not a huge fan of beer and I don't like whiskey. So I didn't do them, but the girls who were staying with me in the hotels did them and they said that they were amazing. They were quite nice. You know, you, would, you could taste different type of whiskey or you could hear all the story about Guinness. What I personally recommend you is to take a sit in a pub and actually drink Guinness and maybe eat something nice, some stew or some other traditional Irish dish. So you will be able to like, you know, get a little bit more with the culture of the city, I would say. Irish people, in my opinion, at least was, you know, St. Patrick's. It was crazy. I also happened to be in the day when there was a rugby semi-final, whatever, between Scotland and Ireland. And I was actually flying to Ireland with all the Scottish people in their kilts. Kilts, I think that's how you call them, the skirts for male, who were going for rugby. And I was like, why do they go for St. Patrick's uh, dressed up like this? But then I figured, that's the rugby thing. So there was also a mess with rugby in the city. But yeah, from area that I really, really like, that was uh, college, all the bars and pubs, so the temple bar area, super nice to walk around. As I told you, sit down, have a drink, maybe eat something. And also I really like the area close to the park where the Oscar Wilde statue is because it was just nice looking. I will show you some pictures. I really enjoyed it walking over there, but I also had very, very good weather. So I was very lucky. And yeah, another thing that is like on the list to see in Dublin is the castle. I haven't entered the castle. There are also the gardens. However, <laughs> I was not lucky enough to enter the gardens because they were closed every time I was going there. I think they closed at like 4 p.m. or something like this. So I was unlucky, but I was also on Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, I cannot complain. But yeah, supposedly they are super nice. They told me they are super nice. Castle itself, I didn't enter. I didn't have an incentive to enter either. I don't even know how much it costs, but not my thing. So I didn't feel like spending money on it. If you like castles, go for it. I've seen so many people around going there. 
for sure there are different tours as well around Dublin, different free walking tours, not free walking tours. The girls from the hostel went for some type of mystery criminal tour of Dublin and they were in love. They said it was super cool. So these ones are recommended a lot for you if you are interested in this type of things. They were literally in love with that tour. So last two things I want to mention it's nightlife and music. So you have a lot of bars with live music. Either they do their own music or they do covers of known bands or like unknown bands, whatever. Like, you know, they do some cover songs or they play their own song. And I found it very cool. I like rock and they were putting a lot of rock music. We went to Temple Bar which I also recommend you to visit either during the day or during the night. This is like the oldest pub in Ireland or in Dublin. I don't know. It's from 1800s, so it's quite nice. And there was a live music as well on Saturday. We went to two different other bars. Uh, we were just like wandering around the city with the bars. And then we ended up with a pub. There was like a pub with live performance, whatever, different floors being. We had a chance to see the live performance as well. You may see it right here. And yeah, and it was quite nice. I really, really liked it. And yeah, and if you like nightlife, it was quite busy, but I also think, again, because of Sans Patrick. However, if you like stuff like this, it would be a perfect place for you. I'm very lucky that I had people in a hostel who went out with me because I went alone there. So it was so nice to have it because like night later, there were not so many, like we were left few people who were from the previous night, but there were a few people who were very weird in the hostel. Actually, they didn't even say hello or anything, like, you know, stuff that I would never, do just because of my let's say respect to other people so if i entered a new room i say hello but boop maybe it's my unexperienced life in hostels however yes that would be it from what i've seen and what is my opinion on dublin there is nothing special however however that's not the end ireland is actually super nice and they do tons of trips around dublin which are like day trips a one hour train to cliffs some hikes trips to another city and I know that if I would stay for longer because I was only there for two days I would do the trips and maybe not in March I don't know in March it was not that bad already like it was already quite nice but I would say in May in April that could be perfect or even like during summer but like you know if you don't have time to go during summertime spring I would say later spring just because it's cold and windy but yeah there are super nice cliffs what I've been said some hikes some different cities you can go for like one day to another city and and yeah and visit it so that's definitely a part of Dublin that I've missed uh, luckily from Luxembourg there are super cheap flights so I hope I'm gonna be back soon for some outdoor stuff because everybody recommended it so the city itself I would not recommend going to the city unless you are very interested in nightlife, live music, going out, you know, bars, pubs, whatever, restaurants. This aren't cool. The city itself, not a lot to see, just more for chilling, hanging out, you know, walking around and I don't know, maybe going shopping or something like this. Outdoor stuff, everybody were recommending and they said to me as well that there are many, many different trips that are available in a way. You just buy the trip for, I don't know, 20, 30 euro and you help visit two or three different cities and you have a bus and you stay in a bus for a few hours and then trip the whole trip is for eight hours. For the cliffs, I've heard that you can arrive there with the train or the bus and it's like one or one and a half hours from Dublin and you then do the hike of two hours, three hours, whatever. So it's quite cool, good experience to have. I haven't traveled alone for a while, so it was also nice to be again alone. I'm going soon to Amsterdam and if you haven't watched my video about Edinburgh, as I mentioned earlier, watch it after this video. I will probably post Amsterdam next week on Wednesday. No, this video is on Wednesday. So no, probably next week on Sunday, you will see video about Amsterdam. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna vlog or if it's gonna be this type of video. I will see, I'm going tomorrow, like today is Saturday for me, so I'm going tomorrow. And yeah, and that would be it for today. So if you enjoyed this video, I would be very happy if you would hit the like button. That helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm so this video will reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel so you will not miss any of my future videos. I talk a lot about studying abroad, my life abroad in Luxembourg, trips and some tips about it so if you enjoy this type of topic subscribe to my channel and here i leave you the video about my visit to edinburgh and the study abroad playlist thank you for watching have a nice day and i'll see you in another video